What's going on? I would guess that obviously you would be among many people that probably aren't going to get a ton of preseason work. So, like at this point in camp, like what's the mentality for somebody who's been in the league, might not be playing a lot of preseason snaps, and, and knows that there's still quite a bit of time before that game that came You know, I think it's a heightened emphasis on what's currently going on in practice. You know, we had a spirit of practice today. Um, it was a little longer than usual, which is needed. Um, and we got a lot of reps, and we got a lot of situational football. Red zone, two minute, um, got a little bit of situational, you know, run game. So being able to have those type of experiences in practice is something that we needed to have right now. What do you make of the uh, fighting in a way? I guess pushing and shoving is probably better. Man, there was some blows in there. Uh, that's needed, though. You know, I think uh, at this part of training camp, dog days are starting to approach, and you're really seeing the cream rise to the top. So. Experiences like that, I think, are, are good for the team. Uh, you know, I know Cliff isn't a fan of fighting, but I think in the trenches, I think that's the type of mentality that you have to have. And I think for us, you know, moving forward, you know, we need to have that fighter's mentality. Uh, we got to find a way to finish. And to have that at the end of practice and still find a way to finish practice, I think is needed for us. Kevin, how rare is it that this offensive line, the guys have been together like two plus years now, how rare is that? It's rare. It's rare. It doesn't happen in the National Football League like it used to. Um, you know, when I came in the league, it was guys that played together for, you know, five plus years. Um, to be able to keep this group together is, is huge. Um, we have great depth, uh, which I'm excited about. We have a great class of rookies um, that are really playing well, really good above the neck. So excited to see them play uh, this weekend. But to have an offensive line that's been together for this long, um, it doesn't happen too often, especially that left side. I mean, Pew and Humph have been playing together for a while. Can you talk about the importance of this team learning how to finish, and, and by that I mean not only the second half of the season, but when you're getting close to the goal line, finishing the drive. Yeah. I agree. It's, it's all about touchdowns at this point. Um, you know, Cliff has talked about red zone efficiency quite a bit in um, this training camp, and that's something that we've really been harping on and really been finding a way to not only rep, but also talk about during meetings. So um, it is a, a heavy emphasis, uh, but at the end of the day, it's on us. We've got to find a, ex find a way to execute in those critical moments of the game. Goal line, goal to goal situations weren't the greatest. Yep. What, what was the problem? You know, it's 11 guys finding a way to execute. Um, you know, I'm not going to sit here and make some excuse. It's not. Uh, something that has to be magical. We got to find a way to get seven uh, when it's go to go. Simple as that. As, as it comes to finishing the season, just like you're finishing a drive, how, how do you go about doing that and fixing that problem? Yeah, I think you know one of it is is, is being healthy. You know, um, you know, late in the season, which I think any team in the National Football League can say that that's something that they want to be able to have. Uh, but at the end of the day, it's being able to lean on those fundamentals, have great technique. Um, and at the end of the day, it's an execution game. You know, it's not magical. It's really about execution and executing in the most critical moments of the game. We know that Rodney had some dis make, went through a thought process in the offseason. How is it, how's it for you as you get to this stage of your career, the love of the game, but also looking forward to what might be out there, very active, doing a lot of other things? Yeah. You know, there was a scrum today, and I was still in it. So apparently, uh, I, still, I still like it a little bit. So. Uh, I enjoy uh, everything about football. I enjoy the camaraderie. Uh, I enjoy the competition that takes place on a consistent basis. Um, I have not fallen out of love with the game of football. Um, you know, it was a coach I used to have. You got to prove your love every day. And every day I get to come out here and prove my love every single day. So um, until that stops happening, I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. Nor am I having any of those thoughts yet either. So I'm feeling good about it. Rodney to come back. It's great. I mean, it's, it's great having them back. It's great having them in the meeting room. It's great having them on the football field. You know, we got a pool over at the, the wigwam. Uh, so at night, we, you know, we get to, to, to chill out in the hot tub and the pool and, and the cold tub and contrast. So to be able to have him around um, is so much wisdom and so much knowledge. He's been around the game a long time, played really, really good ball for a long time. So it's great having him around. Is he enjoying the resort a little bit, golfing at all? No golfing. And I didn't say the first thing you said, but we have the wigwam. <laughs> Talked a lot about Eno Benjamin's development mm -hmm. over the last couple of years. What, what have you seen as a guy who blocks for him? He's been impressive since day one, you know, honestly. I think he's, he has the opportunity now and has done so as far as being able to take that next step in the passing game, understanding where blitzes are coming from, meeting guys in the hole, uh, understanding when we're hot. Um, and understanding when he has to pick up blitzes, you know, whether it's in the A gap, in the C gap, safety's coming off the edge. He's doing a really good job in that phase. He's always been able to run the ball well, um, has great feet, great vision. Um, it's going to be exciting to see him uh, in the mix a little bit more this year. Um, you got, you know, JC and, and him. I think it's going to be a great one two punch. I know the, you know, the first preseason game's not that big of a deal for, for veterans like yourself, but for the younger guys that, you know, this is going to be their first, you know, NFL game, 
I'll exercise you to see what, what, what they do. Because, you know, you can look good in practice, but the game's a whole different story. The game is everything. Um, that's where you're really evaluated. And you're not only evaluated by, you know, the people here at the, the Cardinals franchise, but you're evaluated by 31 other teams. So to be able to put your, your, your best foot forward, I think is something that I, re I want to be able to see these young guys, you know, young guys do. Soak it all in. Uh, embrace the moment. This is a special moment to be able to pro play in the National Football League. And this is a game, whether, you know, we want to say it or not, some guys are playing, some guys are not. But this is still a game, uh, and this is still a, a great opportunity for, you know, guys across the league to make the great first impressions. But, you know, for me and, and for the people internally, you know, I just want to see these guys thrive under the lights. Uh, that's what it's all about. You know, it's a night game. Uh, you're on the road. Uh, it's usually hostile and sensey, but I, I doubt it'd be this hostile this early in the year. Uh, but you want to be able to see them perform, you know, under the lights when uh, the pressure is on a little bit. Do you anticipate you guys will get a series or two this week? We'll see. We'll see. It'd be nice. You know, um, it's always great to be able to put the pads on, kind of go through your process of getting ready for a game, um, getting into that routine. Uh, but we'll see. You know, at the end of the day, it's, it's taking things day by day, you know, following the coach's orders, following the trainer's orders, and being ready when your number's caught up on. What stands out to you uh, now that you've been around uh, playing with Will Hernandez? <laughs> Man, that is a Brahma bull. <laughs> Um, you know, I got bulls back in Texas, and, uh, you know, uh, we got one called Valentine, and he is, uh, he's put together. Will is a, a very, very put together uh, human being. That is a good looking, solid young man. Um, <laughs> He, I mean, it's, it's not many guys that are built like that. Just, you know, I said this to, uh, to Wolf a couple of days ago. He's built like a refrigerator. Um, and it's impressive, you know, being able to block with him, uh, block alongside him. And we still haven't gotten our deuces and, and, and doubles, um, which are, you know, combination blocks. We haven't even done that enough uh, to really be efficient at it. But it's going to be fun uh, playing next to him. How many offensive linemen can you fit in a UConn? <laughs> uh, we had uh, one, two, Three, we had six in the Yukon, um, and that's Rodney's rental for right now. Um, but uh, I think that's enough. I think we had it weighed, weighed down pretty, pretty heavily. Coffee run or? Coffee run, coffee run. You know, we get, we get a little break during the middle of the day, so to be able to go and get some Dutch Bros is, is something that we've been enjoying uh, during our little break time. You mentioned still having the love for the game. Do you look back and say, man, is it amazing how fast the years have gone? They go by fast. They go by fast. Um, you know, whether you on winning teams or whether you're on losing teams, the season goes by fast. Once it starts, it's on and going. Um, but you, you just have to relish each moment. You know, each season has its own flavor to it. You know, I'm excited for what this season holds for us. We know that we have a lot of things that are going to be happening, you know, going on in this locker room, both internally uh, and externally. Um, but we have a great opportunity in front of us. Um, and I think that's what's most exciting about this season. Mentioned, you know, evolving in the past game. Is there anything you guys as linemen can share or do share with the running back in terms of blocking? You know, I think Eno and both JC have done a really good job of finding time to spend time with us in our meeting rooms. So both of them have really been coming in, spending time with us, looking at us, and spending time in the meeting room with us as we're watching that film, how we're setting up blocks, how we're thinking about blocks, them listening to our calls. So they hear a swoop, they know we're bringing everybody backside. You know, if they hear a B, they know we're trying to get this thing vertical, so they know they need to hit it a lot harder. Um, so it's one of those things where we're taking the time to, like, meet with each other outside of what, you know, the coaches are doing. And they're spending time understanding just how we're setting up that scheme. And then, you know, it's something those little, you know, slight edges and slight advantages are so good for a running back because they know exactly where we're going to be at. Um, and then the thing is, when you spend more time with each other, you start, you know, having that camaraderie and having that bond. You can trust that I'm going to do exactly what I say. And when, you know, we have those type of moments in practice where JC is bending it back, you know, along that, that, that combination block, he's putting in exactly what we talked about. And for us, as offensive linemen, we don't get many shots of running the ball, but when we do it, we got to make sure it pops. Has that been typical in your career to have those meetings with running backs? It has. It has. You know, some of the best run games that I've had was when the running backs and offensive linemen spent a lot of time with each other. They knew exactly where they were going to be. You know, the years when I was in Pittsburgh, you know, we spent a lot of time with our running back crew. Um, you know, and now over the last two years, JC was in Pittsburgh. You know, he understands how important that relationship is and was one of the first people to take that step. So it's great to have that relationship with the running backs so they know exactly where we're going to be at and our combinations and how those combinations help their, their running ability. Kelvin, what did you think of uh, Kyler coming out last week just addressing the media over the contract and all that kind of stuff and just getting that off his chest? You know, I think it was needed. Um, like I've been saying all offseason, I've been great. It's been great to see him mature. 
and mature in a number of different factors. And people say, well, what does maturity look like? The fact that he's taken those steps. Um, so I've, I've been appreciative of, of the steps that he's taken as a young man. I'm excited to see him continue to grow um, and excited to see him take even more leaps and bounds because, um, you know, in the National Football League, it's a quarterback driven league, you know. Um, the, the, the ball is truly in his court in a number of different instances. So excited to see him thrive. How did the bull get, get the name Valentine? Man, my, my, uh, my mother has this, this uh, uncanny ability to name her cattle, which you shouldn't be naming your cattle because when you have to actually put a cattle down, there's an affinity for that cattle uh, or for that cow. Um, and Valentine was one of the first bulls we got, and that was the name that she gave Valentine. I'll make sure I send you a picture of Valentine. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you a picture. I'll make sure I send it to Chris. Huh? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. I'm not. No. No. I mean, you, if, if, he, if, if he's eating, you may get to pet his head, but that's about as close as I'm, uh, I'm getting to Valentine. 